Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of the series. I'm going to show you now how waveforms, the software that we're going to use to uh, give and take signals from the analog discovery studio works. So first of all, you have to check that uh, your, your kit is connected to your computer. So you should see some USB connection, discovery studio. Make sure always that you're uh, connected otherwise uh, you're not going to be seeing any any waveform. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that I'm using a MacBook uh, for this example, but for any other operating system, it's going to be essentially the same. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side, um, there are plenty of modules that most of them are going to be used throughout the class. However, in this example video, we're only going to use the WaveGen, which is the waveform generator. And we're also going to use the scope, which is uh, to actually see the oscilloscope signals or the oscilloscope measured signals. So uh, on WaveGen, we can select a different variety of signals that we can feed uh, the circuit in our kit. In our case, we're going to start simple with a sine wave. We're going to select a frequency of 50 hertz. And uh, we're going to define an amplitude. Um, of 2 volts. So you can see the wave from here, 20 milliseconds, which corresponds to 50 hertz, and an amplitude uh, of 2 volts. Okay. So in order to feed this um, to, to our analog discovery studio, we're going to click on run. So now we're generating this uh, sinusoidal waveform uh, into the kit. And with the scope, we should be able to uh, get back those signals that we're measuring with the oscilloscope function. So if we click Run, then we should see some, uh, some waveforms here. First, we need to adjust the base. Let's use uh, 5 millivolts per division. What does it mean? That each square here uh, and on the x-axis is going to count for 5 milliseconds. And we know that 50 hertz in this case correspond to 20 milliseconds per cycle. Uh, so uh, we have that. We have a good visualization of the signals here. Uh, channel 1, we said, we established that that correspond to the input voltage. So I think uh, 500 millivolts per division on the y-axis, it, it's okay. So we have almost 2 uh, volts um, of amplitude. So that's that's okay. We can, we can explain that later. Channel 2, as we mentioned, so let's use for this one 20 millivolts per division. This is a small signal. We're measuring actually current indirectly. And we know that this voltage divided by 20 is going to be actually the current through the circuit that we want to, uh, that we want to simulate. So what we're going to do here is... Uh, add another channel, which is going to be a custom channel. Uh, this case is going to be channel 2, sorry, channel 2 divided by 20. So that's OK. And we're going to change the color to make it uh, consistent with uh, the other channel. This doesn't actually matter, but now we can get rid of channel 2, so we don't want to see channel 2, and we're going to adjust this one to 1 millivolt per division. Uh, 1 20th of this one, essentially. And we can get rid of this one. That means that doesn't mean that it's disconnecting the channel, it's just that uh, we're not visualizing it. So, math 1, this, um, this channel, even though we are specifying millivolts, we uh, actually know that it's milliamps. So the amplitude of this signal, it's about 1.8 or so uh, milliamps. So we have voltage and currents um, on the circuit, exactly what we want. So now, uh, when, once we have those two signals, uh, we can do some uh, more elaborated things. So for example, one of the things that we can add is measurements. So 
we're going to uh, click on add defined measurements on channel one which is the voltage we would like to see let's say the maximum value and we're going to add and we're going to add also which is very important always for AC uh, systems is the AC R RMS value uh, for math uh, one which is the channel where we're measuring current uh, we're going to do the same maximum and RMS so we can see here it's actually 1.7 millivolts it says but we know that it's milliamps we already did the conversion to convert it into amps uh, and the relationship in this case is going to be 1 over square root of 2 to transform into the AC signals because it's, they're pure sinusoidal waves uh, the other thing that we can add these are related to the vertical axis and of course we can add stuff related to the horizontal number of cycles frequency it's always important in this case it's constant but in other cases we have, have we're gonna have so all sorts of uh, signals so 50 Hertz of course the two of them should be the same uh, so channel 2 horizontal frequency uh, 50 Hertz too um, so this gives us already a good picture of what we're measuring uh, very exact values and it's, this is very helpful so uh, the other thing that you can tell already is that the two signals are not in phase what does it mean it means that uh, let's assume that the reference is the orange one the voltage it's the one that has angle zero however this one the uh, current it's actually leading this one so one way to understand this is let's take this uh, dotted line as a reference which one it's going to reach its peak first if we move it current is reaching its peak then voltage so we say current is leading the voltage why because we're taking the voltage as a reference this one is leading it. or the other way to say it is voltage it's lagging current that's uh, less common and it's usually for all uh, AC systems especially in power uh, we consider voltage as the reference and we say that the current is leading or lagging depending is if it's uh, in front or behind uh, the voltage so one thing that is very important and you're going to study this quite a lot it's what is the angle difference of course this is a time difference also but in terms of phasers we're going to measure that difference in terms of angle so uh, luckily for you uh, there is a built-in function under custom global which takes uh, those two channels uh, the, the truth about it is, is that it's taking channel 1 and channel 2 and I know that channel 2 it's actually divided by 2 this thing uh, it's only related to uh, phase so it doesn't matter actually if we use this one math 1 or channel 2 so let's let's use channel 2 phase doesn't have to uh, do much with with amplitudes so in this case 17 degrees uh, the ki the the waveform this functionality is going to give you uh, the actual value but you need to uh, be able to interpret correctly this angle so if we're using the convention that voltage is the angle zero meaning the the reference that means that this current it's going to be leading this uh, voltage by 17 degrees so uh, when we write the phaser this one is going to have some amplitude RMS amplitude of 1.2 milliamps and a phase of 17 degrees or 17.7 .7 degrees okay that's a way that that's a positive angle if the current is lagging the voltage then that angle we would have to interpret it as a negative and that's not going to happen it's not going if if you measure this with a with an inductor circuit then it's not going to show the negative sign so you have to be able to interpret this correctly um, 
So this is uh, 17 degrees of, uh, of difference. Uh, that means that this is a capacitive circuit. We already know that because we built the circuit. Um, but um, we have all the numbers now. You can mathematically calculate all these things and compare how the reality is uh, actually close to what we're um, calculating theoretically. One other thing that I wanted to mention is that even though we're uh, inputting two volts as an amplitude for the input signal, we're actually measuring it and it's 1.9. So that difference is uh, due to the internal impedance of the source. And that difference is not very pronounced in this case because we're driving basically 1.2 milli 1.7 milliamps max. Um, However, if we go up to, let's say, 10 milliamps or, or further, I, I think that the maximum uh, current uh, allowed for this kit is 30 milliamps. But we're going to try to keep all activities less than 10 milliamps. Otherwise, this effect of the internal um, source, sorry, sorry, internal impedance is going to be uh, quite significant. So we want to avoid that. We would like to have two volts. And this is because of uh, uh, the quality of the kit, right? If we would have used uh, real components at the, uh, in the lab, this wouldn't have been a problem. The, the internal impedance, it's quite constant throughout a big range in, in terms of current. So one uh, final thing uh, that I want to add on this video is the calculation of in instantaneous power. Again, we're looking at the time domain voltages and currents, time domain signals. So simply, if we want to uh, calculate current, sorry, power, we're going to do, uh, let's do some coloring here, green. And we're going to do channel 1, which is voltage, times channel M1, which is current, and times. So we're going to adjust this to 1 millivolt per division. So 1 millivolt is not actually 1 millivolt in this case. When we understand what we're doing, we know that implicitly this is 1 milliwatt per division. See? So the maximum instantaneous power, it's around... Um, 3.5 or so uh, milliwatts. So this is important and maybe you haven't gotten to this part yet in the class, uh, but you will most definitely on the next chapter. And instantaneous power, it's a very important uh, variable to calculate. And then we're going to associate with three different, different definitions of power um, that are related to the phase of representation also. So um, I'm going to add one more, me one more measurement to this one. Math 2, which in this case power, uh, instantaneous power, we're going to be very, very, very interested on the average value of this power, instantaneous power. This one is what we're going to call the real power or active power, uh, which in this case is 1.6 milliwatts. It's what, in average, the circuit it's consuming. Uh, the other thing that it's just a hint to what you're going to revise on that chapter is that for some instances, the instantaneous power is negative. So that's that has a big connotation of what is happening. Negative power on a load, that means that the load is producing power and sending it back to the source. That's a big topic that you're going to study. And this uh, going down to the negative values on, on, on active power, uh, it's related to what we call or what we define as reactive power in AC circuits. Again, you're going to study all these concepts, but I want to introduce you to them uh, in advance because we're going to go through uh, power all over the semester. And it's going to be very important that you're comfortable with these definitions. Um, and you can relate it to the time domain uh, instantaneous power. Okay, that's very important. So to finalize a um, recap of what we've done, 
channel one voltage on the circuit that we built channel math one it's the actual current math two it's the instantaneous power voltage times current and we can uh, use measurements to allow us to check the actual values that we want on each signal again you can play with this change the frequency see how the uh, system works um, you can uh, define different um, input values different signals here so i encourage you to play with this try to start with this example that i gave you and try to make variations and understand theoretically and practically what is happening and one additional thing that is going to be very helpful to build your uh, your reports during the labs is going to be this export um, function so uh, on source you can select each source but usually whatever you have on the oscilloscope it's what you want to show so you can do this um, and you're gonna be showing up all the useful information for some specific activity so you can do clip to clipboard and then you paste it on your word or latex document that you're creating so this is very very helpful and it's clear and you're gonna be showing everything that it's uh, important um, so with that we finalize this video I hope it's helpful to everyone if you have any question uh, please reach out to any of the TAs. Thank you.